Now, before we get into the pronunciation, we must ask, who is Woden, and what is his role? In short, Woden is the king of the gods in pre-Abrahamic Germanic spirituality. Not God the supreme person, but a leader of lesser divinities. In other cultures, his name is Odin in the Norse culture, Zeus in the Greek, Jupiter in the Roman, and Indra in the Vedic. Now, pronouncing Woden's name is twofold. The first of which is Woden. Woden. This is quite interesting of itself because we do have attestations, uh, especially in the Edo Verdi uh, Chronicorum uh, from the 10th century, that there is an, an attestation regarding the genealogies of kings or what have you. Uh, that there is a attestation of Wodan. So we have what is called here gemination, uh, where we have a, the doubling of, uh, of letters. You know, gemination uh, from the Latin Gemini. Um, of course, that's not a Latin pronunciation, but, but I'm driving the point that twins, right? Two. So, but this gemination, geminated form, is also attested in the Anglo Saxon Chronicle. Uh, in, in the genitive form, and genitive is meant here by possessive. And this D is an influence of Latin, uh, but later on, this D will be explained. Moving on. So here is from uh, an excerpt from the Edel Verdi Chronicorum, where we have here Woddan, Woddan, regarding Woddes, uh, is also attested uh, in the Anglo Saxon Chronicle. And we have uh, three manuscripts. Um, that have this, so we have Wotted, and this is referring to a battle uh, at Wotedes uh, Berge uh, be Berge Ugh. Berge, Wotedes Berge so yeah, so at Woden's uh, hill or what have you um, Berg uh, is referring to a hill I believe however, the same word can also mean uh, a heap or a burrow so to speak, it, a funeral pile or something like that it's something to the effect of that like a heap of stones or, or this or that anyway secondly Woden can also be pronounced as Woden Woden Joseph Wright and Edward Sievers Sievers say that D as written there was used to represent th in the medial position further this was to differentiate from Thorn, and this was in the 900s. So, really to differentiate from th and th, because before this, uh, th was to represent these fricative sounds, the th and the th. And we know this through variations of spelling through words like fremde, beside fremde. And this is the same word, and it means foreign, strange. As well, in the Edelwardi, Edelwardi chronic. Uh, chronicorum, there are there are attestations of woden, woden uh, so to speak, with the th, which is interesting with itself. We have two attesta attestations here. Uh, this is regarding uh, the genealogies of the kings, as well as this th here. So it, it's quite plausible that one can argue that uh, this would have been pronounced woden, woden. As well, there are attestations in, in much later Old English where by this time um, Anglo-Saxon uh, Anglo England was Christian and, and then you do have contact with the, the Scandinavians, the Danes in particular, um, who still held on to um, their pre-Christian spirituality. For them, they're, they're Odin, so to speak, or pardon me, Odin. Well, that word being, so to speak, naturalized in Old English, we have Odon. We got O, O then, O then, which is interesting of itself. And we have these attestations here, especially this one from uh, Wolfstan's homilies. And we have another one here from Wolfstan's homilies. So in conclusion, uh, the name of the, of the divine personality in question can be pronounced twofold. So we got Wu den, arguably a later pronunciation, and or uh, as Wu then, arguably an earlier pronunciation. And that's it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you're new. And if you really like the channel, 
please become a patron at my Patreon page down below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.